Good morning. Welcome to the 23rd lecture on economics, management and entrepreneurship. If you recall, in the last two lectures, we discussed about time value of money and comparison of alternatives. For two more lectures, including this particular lecture. First, remember that we had defined a rate of return, we defined minimum attractive rate of return and then we developed six interest formulae where we related the first cost to a series of equal payments and to the final sum. So, in a sense we defined three quantities P which we said or defined as principal sum to be paid or received at the present and then an equal payment of A rupees per interest period and F the final sum. We defined six interest formulae. One was related to finding out the present worth of either a final sum F or a equal payment in series A. Then the compound, compound amount factor of either the principal sum P or a equal payment in series A at the end of the uh, interest periods N we call that F or we found out the equivalence of a series of payments or receipts in equal payment manner throughout the project period. We called it either sinking fund factor or capital recovery factor depending on whether we are trying to find out A given F or A given P. In a sense, what we are trying to do if we are given F and we are required to find P, this is present worth. Find P given F of a single payment. The opposite is given P find F. So, we are trying to find out the compound amount factor, compound amount factor of a single payment. We can find out P given A, we call it the present worth. of equal payment series. Present worth factor. The opposite is finding out we call it find A given P, we have invested a P, we call it capital recovery factor. It is not uh, necessary to write equal payment series, even only capital recovery factor is enough, because there are two present worths. It is required to qualify it by saying whether the present worth is for a single payment or for an equal payment in series. That is why we need to write this, but in this case it is always equal payment in series. So, this is only capital recovery factor. One can also find F given A that means, if there is an equal payment in series find F, we call that compound amount factor and since there are two compound amount factor, we qualify it by saying of equal payment series. Uh, 
and lastly a given f which is called the sinking fund factor. And it is not necessary to qualify it, but of course, this is for equal payment series. So, these are the six fundamental factors that we shall be using. Now, we had used this to make comparison among economic alternatives and in that we had discussed three different methods. One was if you recall the present worth comparison method, this is what I had written here. This was taken up in the last time equivalent annual cost comparison method and internal rate of return comparison method. These three are very basic comparison methods that are based on consideration of time value of money. We had taken the present worth cost comparison, we had taken an example where we had considered machine 1 and machine 2. A company can either buy machine 1 with a higher investment cost, but lower maintenance expenses compared to another one which has lower initial investment, but a higher maintenance expense and they had the same period 12 years of life, no salvage value. So, this is the cash flow diagram for the two situations. So, what basically present worth cost comparison does is to find out the present worth of this cash flow. That means, find out the equivalent amount at this point and similarly for this cash flow and then find out whichever is minimum, which is minimum and that is the preferred alternative. So, in this particular case we found out that the present worth for machine 1 was higher at 41,926 rupees compared to the machine 2 which was only 37,000. Since it is a payment from the company machine 2 is less costly and therefore, preferred. So, this is a direct application of present worth cost comparison. Observe that in both these cases the, pay, the number of years for which we are making the comparison is the same. If the number of years varies then the present worth cost comparison method cannot be applied. Then we also for the same problem used the equivalent annual cost comparison method. So, basically in this method we find out the equivalent annuity for both the proposals. Now, in this we found out 30,000 uh, was the initial value p, we calculate the, the equivalent a the capital recovery factor multiplied that with the value p which was 30,000 added to that already existing annuity the maintenance expenses of 2200 that gave a value of 7734 rupees 40 paise and a similar thing we did for machine 2 and that resulted in 6889 rupees 60 paise. Of the two this is lower and therefore, machine 2 is less costly and therefore, preferred. You can see that it is possible both in present worth cost comparison method and in the equivalent annual cost comparison method we are getting results that are similar. Now, we were at the before we ended the last lecture we were talking about internal rate of return method. Now, internal rate of return method as it is defined here it is defined it is the rate of return at which the present worth of all cash flows equals the uh, present worth of returns equals the present cost of investment that is present cost of all cash flows equals 0. So, it is that rate of return at which the present worth of 
all gas flows inflows and outflows together equals 0. Now, remember that if the rate of return is equal to 0, then it is expected that for a project to be viable total net revenue must be greater than the investment. Total net revenue means revenues minus expenses because the rate of return is 0, it is the arithmetic sum of all the revenues minus the expenses that is the net revenue and that must be positive and this must be higher than the investment made initially. Otherwise, the project is not at all viable. Now, if however, rate of return is positive which is always so because of discounting the value at the present time of all the future revenues will be less. Therefore, there will be a point at which the discounted value of all future returns or future net reviews, revenues will be equal to the initial investment and if the discount rate is even higher it is possible that it goes negative. This is what is shown in this diagram. Here is the case the same case, but of course, what we have done is that we have converted the case of two machines into a single machine something like a differential machine. Differential machine means incremental investment. Now, look at this this is machine 1 that is more costly 30,000 rupees we have put negative sign to indicate that it is a cash outflow all these are negative because they are all outflows these are maintenance expenses these are also the expenses maintenance expenses and the initial investment for machine 2. Now, if we subtract machine 1 minus machine 2 it means this is an incremental investment on machine 1. Suppose that the company decides to go for machine 1 then whether any additional in investment would be better will be judged if we subtract this to this. If this is viable it means that machine 2 is economically more viable than machine 1. So, we are considering incremental investment or a differential project converting two projects into a single project. This is how the internal rate of return method has to be applied it is applicable to a single project. So, this indicates the a differential project that implies additional investment over and above the most costly equipment or machine. So, subtracting this we get this is minus 10,000 subtracting this we get 1000, 1000 each. Now, if you see these are positive. So, if we add this for 12 months this becomes 12000 and the investment is 10000. Therefore, if the rate of return is 0 then this additional investment is worth making. So, that is what is shown here the cash flow diagram for that differential project is shown here these are all the revenues net revenue which is positive therefore, the arrows are upwards in the cash flow diagram and this is the initial investment of 10,000. As I was saying if MARR or the rate of return if rate of return is equal to 0 then the discounted values of all this is nothing but 12,000. 12,000 minus 10,000 is 2,000. So, when rate of return is equal to 0 percent then the present worth is 2000. Now, as the value of rate of return increases then the present worth value will come down because the discounted values of these future cash flows will be lower and lower. So, at some point it will be equal to 10,000 and if the discount rate is even higher 
then it may become negative. We are defining that the rate of return at which the discounted value or the present worth of all the future cash flows equals the capital investment, the initial investment that is the internal rate of return. So, how to find out this particular value? If one uses the formulae, it will contain powers r to the power n. So, in this case there will be r to the power 12. So, these values are difficult to solve analytically, one has to therefore, go for approximate solution to find the value of r. Now, interest tables at this point are very useful, because interest tables give for different values of rate of return and n values of the factors. We are interested to find out the present worth of a series of equal payments that is to find p given a r and n r is not known, but n is known as 12. So, what we can do we can look at different interest rate tables for a particular value of n and under the column p given a. So, doing that we found that when r is equal to 2 percent, then the value of the present worth of equal payment series, equal payment series present worth factor for 2 percent and 12 years is 10.575. Firstly, how this 10 comes? Because the present worth of the total cash flow is minus 10,000 plus 1,000 into the equal payment series present worth factor value of course, of r is not known. And therefore, if at the internal rate of return r star this present worth is 0, then we will put this as equal to 0 and therefore, this quantity will be obtained as 10,000 divided by 1,000 which is equal to 10. So, we have to find the value of r star where this factor takes a value 10. So, that is what I am trying to tell you that go to the interest tables for different r's find out which for what value of r star or r p upon a is close to 10. When we do that we find that for 2 percent it is 10.575 and for 3 percent it is 9.954. For other values of interest rates 4, 5, 10, 15 etcetera they are vastly small very small because you can see at 3 it is 9. So, as this becomes 4 or 5 or 7 or 10 or 15 the values will slowly go down. We are interested to find values that are little more or less than 10 close to 10. So, the value of r at which this relationship holds is definitely between 2 to 3 percent. Now, if one actually tries the method of linear interpolation, then one can find that the particular value of r at which this ratio is equal to 10 is 2.93 percent that is what is shown here. For 2 percent interest rate the value was 10.575 the value of the factor equal payment series present worth factor and for 3 percent the value was 9.954. We are interested to know the value of r at which the factor takes a value 10. So, basically it is comparing a similar triangles this is one triangle and this is another triangle. So, this divided by this is equal to this divided by this. This is r minus 2. So, one can find out r which comes to 2.93 percent. Now, we consider a project to be economically viable or feasible 
if the present worth of cash flows at the minimum attractive rate of return must be positive. That means, if the internal rate of return is greater than M A R R, then the project is economically viable. If however, the internal rate of return is less than the minimum attractive rate of return, the project is economically not viable. Now, for any company M A R R is normally known. In this particular case, M A R R was given as what was the value given? It was given as 15 percent R was 15 percent that was M A R R value whereas, internal rate of return is coming as only 2.93 percent. So, naturally internal rate of return is less than the minimum attractive rate of return. It means that the incremental project the incremental investment is not good. That means, machine 1 minus machine 2 is not good which means that machine 2 minus machine 1 is good which means that the machine 2 is preferred to machine 1. Look at this uh, logic the logic is that machine 1 minus machine 2 is not economically feasible. Therefore, what is economically feasible is machine 2 minus machine 1. It means that machine 2 is preferred to machine 1. This is the conclusion that we get. Therefore, if we have a single project, it is easy to judge through IRR whether the particular project is to be accepted and how is, how is it to be done? we find out first of all the IRR and then see whether IRR is greater than minimum attractive rate of return MARR. If it is then that project is better to take up and when we are making a comparison then between two projects then we have to find out or take the difference. Take the difference in such a manner that the initial investment is negative. So, that is why we had taken machine 1 minus minus machine 2. So, that this is the initial investment and these are the returns. So, we had chosen machine 2 to be subtracted from machine 1. Therefore, this becomes negative this is how it is to be chosen and then find out IRR. If IRR is higher than MARR then this initial investment is worth making else initial investment is not worth making. In this particular case IRR is much lower than MARR indicating that this investment in machine 1 to the order of 10,000 is not worth making machine 2 is better. This machine 2 is called the base project. The minimum investment project is called the base project and we are comparing whether any higher investment is possible. Now, that we have taken this now consider two projects A and B with the following data. This example in this example we are we will show that if the internal rate of return method is applied to individual projects while making comparison it can give wrong results. Take this case initial investment of project A is 60,000, the annual net cash flow is 22,000, number of years 4. Initial investment is rupees 70,000, 73,000, and the annual net cash inflow is rupees 26,225, and that also has the same number of years as that of project A, which is 4 years. Now, we can apply present worth cost comparison method, we can also apply internal rate of return method. Let us apply both and see the results. This is tabulated here. This is the capital investment, uh, I am sorry this, uh, this row has to be here, here, here. 
and now it is ok. Capital investment in uh, proposal or uh, project 1 is 60,000 and the net return meaning the uh, revenue minus the expense is 22,000 for machine B the values are 73 and 26 uh, 4 years each. Now, if we do not consider the differential project purely on the basis of this data suppose we apply IRR for project A and for project B the way we had applied it earlier in the earlier example then the value of IRR is obtained as 17.3 percent for project A and 16.3 percent for project B. So, purely if we consider or apply IRR in this way and make a comparison between two different projects then we will be led to believe that machine A is preferred to machine B because it has a higher IRR. But if we apply present worth factor present worth cost comparison method at 10 percent MARR rate of return we find that project B has got a higher value of uh, once again there is a mistake here that should be on 3 0. This is 10,130 compared to 9,738. So, you can see that machine B is preferred, this is positive. Machine B is preferred to machine A on the basis of the present worth cost comparison method. And since they have equal periods, interest are equal periods, number of years is equal, present worth cost comparison method is best applied there. And therefore, this result given by present, present worth cost comparison method gives the consistent result, correct result. Whereas, internal rate of return method gives an inconsistent result, inconsistent with the present worth method and it is called inconsistent ranking problem, because it ranks project A higher than project B, which is not really the case. Therefore, IRR should not be applied in this way to make comparison between two different projects. The right approach to apply IRR is to find out the difference purely based on cost of investment, initial cost of investment A should have been preferred. Why should I go for initial? an additional investment in B. So, that is the additional investment minus 13,000 incremental investment and the incremental revenues whether this is economically viable that I should judge from the internal rate of return method. So, apply internal rate of return method on these cash flows and in this case the value of IRR comes as 11.4 percent which is higher than MARR of 10 percent. It means that this additional investment, the project that needs this additional investment with these revenues is worthwhile, is economically viable and therefore, go for B rather than remain for A. So, this is the right approach for internal rate of return method. Okay. Now, we sometimes encounter problems of multiple projects and suppose that one needs to use or one is required to use the internal rate of return method when there are multiple alternatives or multiple projects then how to apply it. That is what we have shown here in this particular slide. Suppose that there are four projects A, B, C and D. So, first what we do? We rank order them that means, in increasing 
order of their initial capital investment first of all put them. Let B be the least cost of initial investment then higher cost is C and the highest is D. So, let the sequence of A B C D be B C A D when they are arranged in the increasing order of their initial capital investment. So, the right approach is compare B with C and whatever is preferred compare that with A, whatever is preferred compare that with D. Basically, one has to proceed in a sequential manner. So, what is first of all done? First find the IRR for each project and in particular we are interested in B because that is the least cost. But we have to see whether IRR of B is greater than MARR. If IRR of B is itself is not greater than the MARR, then we discard B and then retain only CAD. That's why that's what I have written here. If, however, IRR of B is higher than that of C, then B is called the base project and then we compare the differential project C minus B whether an additional investment over B is justified. And if this differential project IRR is higher than MARR then B is discarded and C is continued as the base project the base project then we have C A D. Now, compare A minus C the differential project A minus C once again find whether the IRR of this differential project is higher than MARR. If it is higher then A is the base project C is rejected or discarded and then finally, compare A and D. So, this sequential process is applied if we have to apply IRR. I think this is clear. Now, we go to discuss the relative advantages of the methods. Firstly, let us understand that the present worth method is the most preferred easily understandable and then it is very popular in the industry. It discounts all the future revenues and costs to the present and can then compare it with the initial investment. However, when we make a comparison between two projects, the number of years for which the projects have a life they have to be the same. If they are different we cannot apply present worth cost comparison method. If we apply that then it will give us wrong results. Say one project is for 4 years another is for 6 years. So, naturally they will give different results and they are not comparable. Therefore, present worth cost comparison method in spite of its simplicity has this difficulty that it can be applied only when the number of years of the two projects is the same. Now, the second method that we took up was equivalent annual cost comparison method. This difficulty that we had with the present worth cost comparison method is surmounted in the equivalent annual cost comparison method. Meaning that if two projects have different periods and therefore, different types of cash flows of course, where present worth cost comparison method cannot be applied we can very well apply the equivalent annual cost comparison method. Because there we are trying to find out in a year what is the cost the annuity. So, whether it is 4 years or 6 years it does not matter we just see whether the equivalent annual cost for each project whichever is lower cost that is what is preferred. If it is revenue whichever is higher is preferred. So, 
unequal times or unequal periods if we are facing facing for projects then we select the equivalent annual cost comparison method. So, here we find out a given p or a given f that means, the capital recovery and the sinking fund factors are to be used in this case because the purpose is to find <coughs> the value of a. Now, lastly the internal rate of return method. Internal rate of return method is good when we have a single project, neither present worth cost comparison method nor the, uh, the equivalent annual cost comparison method can compete with internal rate of return method. IRR can compare uh, with the MAR, MARR value if the internal rate of return method is higher than MARR that project is very viable and if it is less it is not so viable. But if we have to apply IRR to comparison among alternatives then it is a very roundabout process. So, what we do is take the project with the minimum initial investment as the best project and then compare it with the next best project. That means, we take a differential project and see whether this additional investment is justified. So, here again we require equal number of years to apply IRR when we compare two different projects. So, these are the pros and cons of the three methods. However, there are more to it as we shall discuss. <coughs> now, suppose that we have to use present worth method because that is the simplest for comparing between two projects. Now, here are two projects. One project is for a three year duration, another project is for a two year duration and the initial investment here is 10,000 and the annual in, uh, expenses are 4,000 per year in the first project. In the second project it is 20,000 and 1,000 rupees the annual investment annual expenses every year. Now, you can see arithmetically they are equal 4000 into 3 is 12000 plus 10 22000 and this is 1000 into 2 is 2000 plus 20 22000. So, arithmetically they mean the same thing however, they are differences. So, how to use present worth for these cases these two cases or this case because the periods are unequal we cannot straight away apply it. We have we can use two approaches to solve this problem if we have to use present worth. One is to make a repeatability assumption that means, we will assume that once a project is terminated a similar project will start immediately. So, a project with three year duration as soon as third year is complete a similar project is taken up with similar cash flows for next 3 years. And likewise for a 2 year project once 2 years are over once again the similar project is taken up and after 4 years 4th year still another is taken up making a 6 years. That means, 3 times the second project is taken up and first project is taken up 2 times if that happens then both have the same period 6 years that is what I have shown here. Project A as soon as this is complete then immediately another project is taken up for 3 years. So, this is the initial investment for the project 1 when it was taken up for the first time and at the end of the third year again it was taken up. So, that twice this same project was taken up total span of the two projects became 6 
and in this case project 2 was taken up here for 2 years as soon as it was over once again it was taken up as soon as the fourth year was over still once again project 2 was taken up. So, the total span for this case was 6 years. Now, forcibly we have made both the spans of the project equal. Once we have this we can apply the present worth cost comparison method. So, this was 10,000. So, 10,000 in this case 10,000 plus 10,000 that is find out the present worth of a future sum f given 10 percent interest rate and 3 years. That is why I have written down single payment present worth factor. This one I am discounting to the present this value was also 10,000 and these payments were 4,000 each for 6 years. So, I found out 4,000 into this is equal payment series equal payment series present worth factor for 6 years and an interest rate of 10. So, from the table I can find out the values do this calculation and the value came to 27461 rupees. And for this particular case this was 10, 20,000. So, 20,000, 20,000 remains this 20,000 has to be discounted to the present. So, this is single payment present worth factor for 2 years this one is single payment present worth factor for 4 years. So, that is what we have done 20,000 into single payment present worth factor for 2 years single payment present worth factor for 4 years multiplied by 20,000 plus these annual payments were 1000 rupees and this continued for 6 years. So, this is equal payment series this is equal payment series present worth factor 6 years that thing came to 54,543 rupees. So, this was much higher compared to this since they are all costs or expenses or cash outflows we will say that project 1 is preferred to project or machine 1 is preferred to machine 2. So, if we have to apply present worth cost comparison method one way is to make what is called a repeatability assumption the same project is repeated after it is terminated. There is yet another approach to use the present worth cost comparison method which is also used and that is called co terminated assumption. Take the same example this was a case of sorry this was uh, I think uh, project A has a 3 year duration project 2 has a 2 year duration, but I think I have written here uh, project A has 3 uh, no it is ok project A has uh, Oh no, I, I think I made a mistake here. This should be B and this should be A. Yes, project A has a 3 year duration and project 2 completes here. So, this is an extra thing. So, we are we were unable to make a comparison between project A and B unless the repeatability assumption was made. So, what we can say that find out the final sum or final worth at this point final worth mean find out the, the compound amount factor use the compound amount factor every time for all cash flows to find out the value at the terminal time period 3 that is the final worth just as we were using P w as present worth if we convert all our cash flows to the final time period we will call that final worth. So, find out the final worth of all cash flows at time point 3 and similarly find out the final worth of all cash flows at point 2 
and then assume that at this point the amount that came as the final worth is reinvested at an MARR for one more year. So, that it becomes equal to 3 and then find the final sum. So, what we have done we uh, first find out the uh, final worth of the cash flows at time period 2 and then multiply that with 1 plus r that is all where r is MARR for 1 year multiply that by f given p r 1 which is nothing but just 1 plus r to find final worth at the end of the third year and compare that final worth with this final worth and whichever is higher or whichever is lower because they are all cost in our case take that. So, this is another useful method of using present, present worth cost comparison when the time periods are unequal. Now, we are still in IRR because internal rate of return is very much talked about and particularly in industry they are interested to find out IRR. We are trying to give in this particular uh, slide an explanation of why the word internal why we are calling it internal, what is the meaning of the word internal in IRR internal rate of return. Now, you see take this particular cash flow to illustrate that I have taken this cash flow I have assumed that there is an initial investment of P and for every year 1 through N there are certain revenues and certain expenses. So, R 1 and E 1 are revenue and expense in time period 1 for 2 it is R 2 E T etcetera R n E n. Now, what basically internal uh, rate of return means it means that P is invested at that R I R R let us say R is that internal rate of return then its value becomes P into 1 plus R after 1 year. and then it is reduced by R 1 minus E 1. So, the unrecovered investment becomes P into 1 plus R minus within parenthesis R 1 minus E 1. So, whatever we have invested after, after 1 year it is compounded amount is P into 1 plus R, but it is reduced by the net return that comes to me. From here once again it is as if it is invested. So, it is an internal investment that we are thinking of it is as if it is internally invested once again for another year resulting in whatever amount this was into 1 minus r, but then it is less the net revenue which is r 2 minus e 2 at this point and this continues till at some point the value is such that when we subtract R n minus E n the net unrecovered investment balance becomes 0. This is the basic meaning of internal rate of return that means that when we talk about internal in uh, rate of return it has an implication that the fund generated or fund invested is internally reinvested such that after some time at a particular value of r the net cash flow or present worth of net un unrecovered investment balance is 0. Now, in our next lecture we shall study about the external rate of return if this is internal rate of return what is external rate of return we shall also study about in interest rates that change from period to period 
and if compounding takes place more frequently than only once in a year. So, these cases are quite interesting and also they are quite realistic that is the reason we shall spend some more time on this uh, time value of money and on comparison among alternatives before we actually take up new topics of managerial economics. Thank you.